Well, since we are doing graphing, I think it's only wise for us to talk about using our graphing calculators. So, I know if you don't have them, you'll at least bring them out and use the videos here. Now, whenever we are using the graphing calculator, it's going to be best for you to start off at the very beginning. Start with a cleared memory. So the easy way to clear your memory is press second and plus to bring up the memory menu. And for most of you, if you have a TI-84 or a TI-83 plus, you need to just press 7 to reset. Reset all RAM, yes. Are you sure you want to? And you press 2. That way, whenever I go to graph, everything is back to factor default settings, and everybody's on the same page here. Now, if you remember how to graph before, you have to use the Y equals button. So if I press Y equals, I bring up the inventory. Now, this guy's already solved for y, so I can type in exactly what I see here, which is negative 2x plus 7. Okay? And then how do I get this line to show up? How do I graph this? You click the graph button. Yeah. Click the graph button, right? So click graph, and there it is. Now, it may not look exactly like what I have here, but it should match up fairly well. You see. The y-intercept of 0 is 7. It's kind of hard to pick out, but it is there. Your x-intercept is in between. Let's see, there's 1, 2. It's in between 3 and 4, right? right? Look at my graph. It's in between 3 and 4. So I feel good about that. Now, one of the neat things that you can do here is that you can go to your table by pressing second graph. And under the table, it has this t-table already created for you. When x is 0, y is 7. I knew that. When x is 1, y is 5. When x is 2, y is 3. Those were the first three values that I had here in my t-table. And the last guy I did was 6, negative 5. That shows up there as well. What do you guys think about that? So, I mean, this would be great when you can use your graphing calculator on the final exam. Right? All this technology ready for you to use. Now, if you go back to the graph, you can trace along the graph if you want to, but it's not really the best thing. See, when I click trace, it gives you the order pairs where the tracer is located, 0, 7. But notice as you go to the left and to the right, it gives you these crazy decimal values. And that's not very useful to you. Now, you can change that by going to zoom. And if you do Z decimal, Z decimal is going to make every pixel on the screen to be worth one-tenth. Okay, so now there's my graph. You see that the y-intercept doesn't show up because now every pixel up, down, left, and right is worth one-tenth. So if I do my trace, see these nice valleys that I have here? Eventually I'm going to be able to get back down to, see there we are. So x is 2.2, y is 2.6, and so on. It's a lot easier for me to trace along that way if that's what you want to do. Of course, if you've got your t-table, that's going to be just as good as anything else. Another zooming feature you have here, if you go down, is the integer. Instead of making each pixel, each dot here, to be worth a tenth, it makes each pixel to be worth one unit. Now, of course, it, it all depends on where you're zooming in from. I'll have it zoom in at the origin. So you have to be careful here because this does not mean one unit. The tick marks here mean every 10 units. So if you trace, each time you move along, it's going to be incrementing by 1 for the x. And of course, the y increments accordingly. Now, it's not completely useful for this guy because I think it's too zoomed out for us. But you can always go back to the default zooming window by pressing zoom. Option number six is Z standard, and Z standard goes back to your normal negative 10 to 10 for both the X and for the Y direction.